Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. I want to share with you today one of my new favorite recipes, one of my favorite new things just in general. It's called kimchi. It's pretty much the Swiss army knife of condiments. I've been so hooked on kimchi lately that I've been topping almost everything that I eat with it. Uh, it's, a, it's basically a fermented cabbage. It's very simple to make. It uses all fresh veggies and spices. We're gonna figure out how to do that. We're gonna figure out if it freeze dries. Coming up. <laughs> Kimchi is pretty simple to make and it's using all fresh ingredients. There are a few ingredients that you may have a little bit of trouble uh, sourcing depending on where you live. Uh, I am fortunate enough to live where we have a store that just carries just about anything you can think of. But let's go over the ingredients quick. You're gonna need two Napa cabbages. They're a little bit different than a regular cabbage. It's kind of a cross between a cabbage and an iceberg lettuce. And then these guys right here are called a daikon radish. You'll need some green onions, pretty common. Uh, four carrots. You'll need some ginger, some fresh ginger root. That might be tricky depending on where you live. You'll need some fresh garlic cloves, some red pepper, uh, preferably Korean red pepper if you have it. If not, red pepper will work. Uh, quite a bit of salt, kosher salt, and you will need some fish sauce as well. Last, you need a pear, preferably an Asian pear, or if you don't have that, you can use an apple, which is what I'm gonna use today. Uh, we're basically just gonna cut everything up. I'm gonna cut it a certain way. You can cut it the way I cut it. Otherwise, if you like a different texture, make some changes and let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take the end off of this Napa cabbage. You're gonna take this and we're gonna cut this Napa cabbage right down the center so we can cut it in half. We're gonna take one of those halves, or actually both of the halves, and we're gonna cut those in half as well. And we're gonna take each one of those quarters and about every one inch, we're gonna cut strips. And then those will go into a large mixing bowl until you have a big bowl full of two heads of Napa cabbage. Once you have that, you're gonna take kosher salt and you're going to just cover, and I do mean cover this. And if you're salt sensitive, don't panic because all this is doing is it's gonna pull all of the moisture out of this lettuce. And that way it will ferment properly. And 99% of this is going to get rinsed off. So once it's salted, you're gonna kinda mix this all around and you're gonna try and squeeze all of the lettuce and more or less just milk that water right out of the lettuce. We're gonna let this sit for ideally about an hour to an hour and a half so it can pull that water out. And in the meantime, we are going to dice up our other vegetables. We're gonna start with two bunches of green onions. And we're gonna take our green onions, we're gonna cut the roots off, and then we're going to dice them into half inch to one inch sections. Then we're gonna julienne uh, four carrots and I leave the skins on. If they're organic or you, uh, you've grown them yourself, I don't really worry about that kind of stuff, but cut them into about two inch sections. You can do this however you want um, if you don't want to do it my way. And then you're just gonna cut them into little tiny strips like this. Watch your fingers or use a mandolin. And then once you have your strips, you're going to cut them into even thinner strips. And what you're left with is something that looks like a garnish. We're then gonna need three small-sized daikon radishes or two medium-sized daikon radishes. You are gonna to wanna to peel these. And for the daikon radishes, you're gonna do a very similar cut, just a little bit thicker. You're gonna to wanna to cut these into planks about one to two inches long. And then from there, you're gonna make just a little bit wider, longer rectangle. And a daikon radish in texture is very similar to what you're used to, I guess an American version if you wanna call that. Um, however, it is much less spicy. Same uh, mouth feel, same texture, and also a very similar look. Now we're gonna make our paste. We're gonna take about 150 grams of ginger. We're gonna peel it, and then we're gonna slice it. We're gonna throw it into a food processor with a couple other ingredients. Add that to your food processor along with 12 cloves of garlic. And we need two apples or pears that have been skinned and diced. Last, we're gonna add half a cup of fish sauce, and we're gonna blend this all to a smooth paste. 
Transfer that paste to a bowl and then you're gonna add a quarter to a half a cup of red pepper flakes, just depending on how spicy you want this. We like our spicy, so we're doing the full half cup. You might wanna taste test before you actually add it back to this other stuff. So there should have been a ton of water that was pulled out of all of your Napa cabbage. You're gonna add this to a colander. We're gonna rinse this and kind of toss it around while rinsing. You wanna get almost all, if not all of the salt out of this cabbage. All right, now we're gonna combine all of our ingredients. It's very helpful if you have a large mixing bowl to put all of this in. It gives you plenty of room. This is a double batch. Uh, normally I would just make a single because this is kind of a lot of work when you do a whole bunch together. It's just, it, it dirties a lot of dishes and stuff. It's easier just to throw together a small batch. For freeze drying, I want to make sure that this is going to fill one tray at least, hopefully a couple of trays. Um, we're gonna add all of this together and then we're gonna mix together. You can see the paste normally uh, on kimchi. If you use a Korean red pepper, it will actually turn the paste red. If you're using just red pepper flakes, it's just gonna kinda look like a, a ginger paste. And once this is well mixed, you're gonna wanna put it into a mason jar. And this can be tricky. You'll probably have to take something and poke it down into the jar and then even once you get it down into the jar, we're gonna pack this really tight. You want all of these vegetables to be covered and you'll probably have to use multiple jars if you're doing this recipe because this recipe is doubled. And I got mine to fit into two jars. Then you wanna put the caps on these mason jars. You don't wanna torque them down. Uh, you want air to be able to escape. Make sure that all your veggies in there do not have a bunch of air pockets and things in there. You want all that air bubble uh, stuff to, to be out and you want all of your vegetables to be submerged in the liquid. We're gonna let these sit room temperature four to seven days. I would taste them at four or five days just to see if that's how you want it to taste. Uh, the longer you like leave it in there, the more fermented it's gonna get. So if you don't like the super fermented taste, when it's to your liking, you can screw this all the way down and it will stop the fermentation process as soon as it cannot get oxygen anymore. So that will, that will stop it right away. Uh, this can actually be stored without freeze drying for a very long time, uh, usually months upon months. So the shelf life of this is pretty good by itself, but we're gonna take it up a notch by freeze drying. So we're on day four now of our fermentation, and I wanna point out a couple of things. You're gonna notice uh, some, some definite air bubbles, and that's just because everything's fermenting. So it is off-gassing um, just from fermentation, and you will notice a smell. And I am like all the way to the top of this, so leave some room for sure. You can see those air bubbles coming up now. First go around at homemade kimchi. That's very good. I do think I'm gonna leave it in for a couple more days just so I can get more of that kimchi flavor. But mine is very spicy. It's a little bit salty, but this is really meant for a, a topper or a condiment to go with something. So you want it to have a very distinct flavor and add a lot of flavor to whatever you're putting it with. It's really good though. All right, well it's day seven and our kimchi is all ready. So I'm gonna give this a quick taste test and then we're gonna throw it on a tray and get this freeze drying. It's gonna be tough not to just uh, eat a whole bunch of this, but I do wanna taste it before we throw it in, just make sure it's ready to go. It's just a ton of flavor and it just, um, it just adds a lot to whatever you add it to. Even a little bit will do that. This is absolutely perfect the way that I want it. Uh, I'm gonna go onto a pre-cut parchment lined tray and then I'm gonna weigh it and that way we can get this back, ideally back to uh, the way it is right now. First I wanna show you how amazingly delicious this looks and I'm really trying to resist eating this. This filled about two medium trays. I don't have them super stacked. You can see that they're kind of just above the rim. Uh, I made them both about 1,750 grams. That way we can uh, rehydrate them both very easily. And I think for rehydration purposes, it's probably best to rehydrate these uh, as an entire tray, just because you can throw them back into a mason jar or some kind of storage thing. Around here, this stuff doesn't last too long. We, uh, we use it on a whole bunch of different things because it is so, uh, it's so universal for just lots of different stuff. All right, we're gonna add our kimchi 
to some drunken noodles, which actually would pair really well together. Uh, you could top you could top the drunken noodles with this kimchi, which would be pretty awesome. They're very similar water content, so the cycle time should be very similar. This recipe, as well as 200 other recipes, can be found on freezedryingcookbook.com now. And we add our Sunday video recipes on Monday morning, so if you want to stay up to date on our recipes, make sure you check that out on Monday mornings. And if you want to check out the freeze drying hard copy version, we have over 100 recipes in this as well. Uh, we can provide you with an Amazon link down in the description. If you want to check out more freeze drying videos, make sure you subscribe to Live Life Simple. We do all freeze drying on this channel. Also, make sure you click the notifications bell. That will send you a notification every time we release a new video. That's Sundays at 8 a.m. Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Uh, since this whole thing began, if you like the content we're providing, make sure you let us know. Give us a thumbs up. And if you want to connect with other fellow freeze dryers, make sure you join our Facebook group or our MeWe group. It's just retired at 40s freeze drying group. There's over 60,000 members on there now. Uh, you can find questions to anything you can possibly imagine. Use this search function. You can search all kinds of old threads. You can search for questions, keywords, uh, members, all kinds of things. If you can't find it on there, I don't think you can find it at this point. We also do giveaways every single month in our Facebook group, and that is possible because of the people who have used our affiliate link through Harvest Right. Uh, if you're gonna purchase a freeze dryer, please consider using our affiliate link. Uh, it really helps out this YouTube channel. It helps us maintain our groups. It really helps us do our giveaways, and it also helps us develop products for freezedryingsupplies.com. Any of the accessories you have seen in this video and most likely any of the other videos have been developed by us. We sell them at Freeze Drying Supplies. We're trying to streamline the entire freeze drying process, make the packaging, the freeze drying, make it all as painless as possible. And now it sounds like our kimchi is wrapping it up. So I'm excited to check this out. Let's go take it to the freeze drying kitchen. Well, our kimchi took about 39 hours. I did add a little bit of time and that was also uh, taking in consideration that we did not pre-freeze these so a little bit longer. Kimchi does have quite a bit of liquid in it. And now the freeze dryer smells really nice. I'm gonna see what these weigh now that they've been freeze dried. So our first tray is about 854 grams. Our second tray should be pretty close to that. Second tray is 834 grams. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw one whole tray uh, back into this mason jar using our new food funnel. This will be out very soon. If it's not already, I'll make a video on it when it's ready. Uh, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. We do have a stand in the works for it as well. But 844 grams is the tray we're gonna use. I'm going to, uh, to put this back down in the ball jar. This should make it very easy for rehydration because we can just, uh, <coughs> wow, there's some pepper coming off here. <laughs> so be careful if you do this. Uh, this will make it very easy for rehydration because we can just, uh, it, you keep it in a mason jar anyway and we can add just the exact same amount of uh, liquid that came off of it in the, in the first place. I do recommend using parchment paper in this because this is really, really stuck on here. And if you did not have the parchment paper, I think you would have a, uh, a sticky mess. The difference between this not freeze dried and freeze dried was about 900 grams. So I think that should be just about three and a half cups of water. That sounds like a lot to me. So I'm just gonna do uh, one cup at a time. I'm gonna start with two cups of water. I'm gonna kind of put this upside down and mix all of the contents together and uh, we'll see what happens. Two cups perk this up pretty good. So I'm gonna add my third because I think we should be good there. And on this third, I'm just gonna mix this up and then I'm gonna let this sit for I don't know, probably five or 10 minutes because I think there's probably a lot of uh, moisture that needs to be ab absorbed. Well, three cups it is. Uh, I don't think it needs any more. I, I think that it, we took three and a half cups out, but something like this is just gonna change just enough that it, it just doesn't need the extra moisture in my opinion. One thing I am really surprised about, uh, it does compact down quite a bit. Uh, I would expect it to be a little more soggy just because vegetables usually are after they're freeze dried or most, most of them are. This does still have a crunch, which surprises me. My overall opinion though is it, it's about 80 to 90%, I would say. It is a little bit soggier, which you would expect just from taking something freeze dried and adding a bunch of water to it and letting it sit. It's totally usable and it's probably better than anything that you can buy in the store still. 
So I would still call this a win. It's tasty, it works well still, and this makes it so this kimchi can be stored very long term. There's nothing in here that would keep it from not going 20 plus years. Uh, you do lose a, just a little bit just because it, it kind of kind of scrunches down after you add the water. So the jar is not quite as full as it was, but totally usable, 80-90% win. I call that a win in my book. I'm totally fine with a B. I don't need an A plus every time. Uh, in the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.